everyone, Kessel back. Another problem for you. This time we're diving into wood design. And today we're going to be doing um, a taking a look at beam design, a wood beam design with loading on it. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. Uh, so as you can see, we have a span of 10 feet. Uh, we have a uniformly distributed load across that 10 foot span, a uh, pin connection on both sides. We have a dead load of 10 PSF and a live load of 40 PSF. And we have a trip width of two feet, 24 inches. Uh, so first thing, uh, wood design, you almost always want to stay in ASD. Um, you can technically do it in LRFD. I've done it before um, when I was newer to wood design and I found out very quickly that ASD is always, pretty much always the way to go. So a um, little life rule there. When designing with wood, always stay in ASD. Um, all right, so let's move forward. So um, the um, load case that's going to be controlling for the scenario is uh, ASD dead plus live. So that's really easy. 10 plus 40 is 50 PSF with a two foot trib width. That gets you 100 PLF as W. So that's your uniformly distributed load across your beam. Next. Um, we need our required moment, um, and that's just WL squared over 8, so 10 foot span, 100 PLF is W, gets you 1,250 pound feet, um, and shear, so we're going to, today we're going to be doing both, um, bending capacity of the beam, as well as shear capacity of the beam, um, so, uh, required shear is WL over 2. And that's just, uh, gets you 500 pounds. Easy so far. We know how to do that stuff. All right, so now we're jumping into wood. Um, so first, we need to select our species. Um, and I have chosen a Doug Fir Larch DF for its, uh, <clears throat> its symbol. And you can choose many different types of wood for your design, but most of the time in building construction, at least in the Pacific Northwest, which is where I'm located, dug fir is the normally the lumber that's used for most buildings um, that are made of wood, obviously. So where can we get information on the dug fir? Um, oh, if we can focus in for you guys. There we go. Um, that we go to our NDS supplement. That's the, that's the thin one. And we're going to go to, um, two to four inch thick materials. And today we're going to be trying a number one, two by 10. So the two by 10 is just the dimensions of the board. Um, and number one is the, um, is the grade um, of the beam. So if we go back over, you'll see all these charts. This is actually table 4A continued. Um, let me flip back, it starts on the first page, but many, many different types of wood species in the black there, Alaskan spruce, aspen, it's all alphabetical order. So we're gonna go to Doug Fir which dug for larch and we're going to do uh, a number one and then all of these values if you go up to the top of the chart you have bending tension parallel to grain shear parallel to grain you guys can read the rest but basically it gives you design values in a stress so pounds per square inch force over area stress um, for all the different um i guess loading criteria uh, of the member, as well as modulus of elasticity, specific gravity, and grading rules agency. Um, that's just who um, specifies for each uh, species of wood. So we're going to go down and we're going to take down the information for a dug for a larch um, for a number one slash number two, because we're number one. Um, two inches and wider, so that's us because we have a two by ten. And we're going to take down all this information. So actually, we don't need all of it because we're just designing for bending and for um, shear today. So FB, 1,000 PSI, that's bending, your bending stress. 
FV, your shear stress, is 180 PSI, and that's shear parallel to grain. Your modulus of elasticity, 1.7 times 10 to the 6 PSI, and then your minimum modulus of elasticity, 6.2 times 10 to the 5th PSI. Um, the area of our member, so we said it's 2 by 10, but in modern um, design and, and wood production, um, you shave off a half inch uh, based on that dimension of lumber. So 2 by 10 is actually 1.5 by 9.5. So that our area is 14.25 square inches. And then our I um, of our section is 107.2 uh, inches to the fourth. And again, that's using the 1.5 and the 9.5. Don't forget that. You don't want to put 2 by 10 because that's not true to what the actual cross-section of, of the board is or of the member is. All right, another trick for you guys for wood design. Highly, highly recommend this. I had to do this a bunch to finally get it through my head. Check deflection first. I know we can kind of forget about deflection. Um, you know, we're checking moments, we're checking shears, we want to do all that stuff. And then deflection always seems like it's the last thing on most people's minds. For wood, highly recommend checking for deflection first because a lot of the time uh, deflection controls your design rather than um, the bending strength or the sheer strength of the member, but deflection. So for a distributed load, the equation is 5WL to the fourth over 384EI. You plug all that in. Remember, inch. I like to keep everything in pounds and inches for this case. So your length may be 10 feet, but that's not going to be converted into inches. Your W might have been the 100 PLF. You got to break that down into PLI. Um, and everything else should be good. Inches, inches, pounds, inches, pounds, inches. Okay, so we're good. That dumps out 0 0.123 inches. And we're going to use a criteria of, it's pretty common, L over 360. So your length, so your 10 foot span is what we're designing for, or 120 inches. So 120 inches over 360 equals 0 0.33 inches. So that's the max deflection that we could have. We have 0.123. So we're under that, so we're good. So um, the beam is at least passes in deflection. Now we need to check its bending strength. Um, oh, wrong page. Hold, please. Sorry about that. All right. So we want to check bending capacity. So we know our required moment, as we said before, is 1250 pound feet. Um, we want the section modulus, which is BD squared over 6, B being the 1.5, the skinny portion of the board, and D being the, the long depth portion of the board, so 9.5. That gets us 22.56 inches um, cubed. And you want to, in wood design, you want to compare the stresses. That's usually the easiest way to go about it. So by doing M over S... So S being inches to the third, and your moment being pound feet, which you can convert to pound inches by multiplying by 12. Pound inch over inches to the third gets you PSI, which is a stress, pounds over area, force over area. I'm going to hammer that home on you guys. So M over S gets you 665 PSI. That's your required bending stress. So... That is the demand that's being loaded um, based on the loading on the beam. That is the required stress that we need to overcome That's that the beam is being felt. Um, now we get into our factors. So you have, believe it or not, really it's this many. You have all these different factors for wood design. And those come from, so we're going to close our small manual, our supplement, and now we're going to go to the big NDS, the really big one. And we're going to go to, I have it tabbed. So we're going to go to Sawn Lumber, Chapter 4. And if we flip through a couple pages, you will come to a chart. And this is all the um, 
factors that apply to your different stresses of, of a wood member. So for us, so right now we're looking at bending. So that's FB. And what you need to do in order to get your final FB to compare, because um, remember, this is a stress. So this is the stress of the board. Um, and we need to make sure that that is higher than the stress acting on the board. So FB prime is our final number. And FB prime equals FB times all of these factors. Um, as you see here, ASD only. So this is a factor you'd apply when you're using ASD. If you are calculating using LRFD, you have to use these three values instead of this CD value. So, and there's rules for all of these um, within, within this book. Um, I'm not going to go over each one, but you can. it's highlighted throughout. Like if you look below here, CL, CF, CFU. I mean, they're all over the place. It tells you what to do, where it comes from. But um, CD will be our first, and that's 0 0.9. And we get that. That's the load duration factor, and that's actually back in this book. And it's way, way back at the beginning. Getting, if I can, let's see if I can flip through it. Yes. Um, so table 2.32, your load duration factor is based on the, um, the largest load um, acting on your member. Um, so for this case, um, it would be the live load because the live load is 40 PSF versus the um, dead load, which is just 10 PSF. So it would be, your CD would be 1.0. Um, and actually, believe it or not, for this case, I spaced out and used 0 0.9 um, using the dead load. But we're going to keep running through this, assuming 0 0.9. So let's just let's just forget about that. Be our little secret. But this table, that's where that's where it comes from. The next is CM. So that's your moisture content. Um, Anytime you're doing normal construction that's not, that's wood members that aren't exposed to the outdoors or to weather or moisture, um, CM is going to be 1.0. CT, that's temperature. I think it's, I can't remember exactly, but it's it's defined in this book. I think it's any members that are exposed to temperatures greater than 100 degrees or 120 degrees or, or some something like that. Um you might have a different factor here, but for anything else, any type of structure that you're building that's wood is for occupancy, um, CT is almost always going to be 1.0. CF, again, this equation comes from the book. It's 12 over D raised to the 1 ninth, and it has to be less than or equal to 1.0. So 12, your depth is your depth of your beam which is 9.5 inches, because we're doing a two by 10. That gets you 1.02, so it can't be greater than one, so it's just 1.0. CFU is your flat use factor, so that's if this board were to be lying flat and then we were loading it, but it's not. We're assuming that we're loading it in the strong axis, which is loading it like that. So, Flat use factor is just 1.0. If you were to switch it sideways and have it on its um, flat side, this factor would be significantly less than 1 because if you think about it, you turn a board on its side, it's going to bend a lot just from you know growing up being a kid and jumping on a piece of wood or something like that. If you turn it on its side, on its flat side, it's going to bounce all over the place and it's going to really, really um, be a lot weaker than when it's bending in its strong axis. Insizing factor, um, this right now, I'm not going to get into it, but you can just assume it's 1.0. Most of the time, it's 1.0. Um, again, there is literature within the book on um, insizing, and it goes into depth about it. So I'd recommend going through each of these and reading each definition as to where this comes from so that you can make sure that um, whether each one applies or does not apply to your case. And then CR is a repetitive factor. Um, so that's if you had like a whole roofing system and you had two by tens, you know, at, uh, two feet on center to make up that roof, that would get you your repetitive factor 
to actually be greater than one. So it would give you additional strength in your beam. But in this case, we just have one beam. So we're just gonna assume 1.0. Lastly, I know we're almost there, CL, uh, we need to figure that out. And that is your, um, I'm forgetting off the top of my head here, CL, so we'll go back to our chart, um, is your beam stability factor. Okay, so we have our beam sitting up like this, so although it's being loaded in a strong axis, it's still pretty unstable. Um, you know, that can wobble, that, can, that should be braced. Um, but in this case, it's not, so we need to figure out CL, because that's probably going to reduce its strength. So you have to start by doing L over D, LU over D, so that's your unbraced length. Um, and that gets you 12.63, which is greater than 7. So that means your effective length equals, and again, these are equations straight from the book. So you can't do this without your NDS manual. 1.63 LU plus 3D, that gets you 224 inches. That's your effective length. RB equals square root of LE times D over B squared. That gets you 30.7. That needs to be less than or equal to 50. So we're good there. Um, that's per NDS 3.3.3.7. Then FBE is the next thing you need to find. And this is all listed out literally directly in a row. It's a step-by-step -step on how to do it. Um, and here we can even quickly go to it for you guys. So we're not, you trust me that I'm not just making it up. Here we are. So you first have this first chart and you want to check your LU over D. So this is 3.3.3 .3 is less than seven or if it's greater than seven. So ours was greater than seven. And then it's all your different spans. So you have cantilevers and single span. We have a uniformly distributed load. So we come across and that's our equation. So that's how we got LE. You move to RB equals that, we talked about it before. Then you come down and CL is what we're looking for, equals all of this junk. Well, we still need FBE and F star B, which then up here is these. So right now we're doing FBE, which is 1.2 times E min prime over RB squared. So if we come back here, now that you guys believe me, E min prime is E min times CM, because you have your factors here. So now E min prime actually has a different set of factors, which is again, back at this table, 4.3.1. So your E min prime is just your moisture coefficient, your temperature coefficient, your insizing coefficient, and now this new coefficient, your buckling stiffness, uh, stiffness factor coefficient, CT. All right, so we need to go get that now. CT is defined on the next page as this. We have more factors to go find. Although, wait a minute, it lets us know, okay, KM is this. For seasoned wood of nine, to 19% moisture content, which is what we have, because that's our CM, um, which we assume is one, so we're in this. So we know our KM. LE, we already know. Um, CT, we're going to assume our member is machine evaluated lumber, MEL. So KT equals 0 0.75. And then E, we knew from our supplement manual. And we wrote that down previously which is E is 1.7 times 10 to the sixth, sixth PSI. So we run through, plug all this in. Now LE we had as 224 inches, but um, in the manual, in the NDS, it says